Radical, episode 81. Welcome to Radical, ladies and gents. Today, you will hear a conversation between myself and my buddy, Brian Plummer. Uh, Brian is from uh, First Force Reconnaissance Company. We, uh, we were, I think we did one of the very early episodes together. And um, he's uh, got his own show. It's called Route 16 Grind. You should definitely go check it out. But um, he asked me to, to come on, and, and I just really haven't had my studio set up yet. It's laying in pieces. Uh, and this is the first recording from the studio. Um, but uh, it's, it's a makeshift. You guys should see it. It's, it's actually the most comfortable I've ever been. I've got a, a chair and a half in, in the studio, and I makeshift a uh, little uh, I don't know, bedside table, if you will, where I've got my microphone and my recorder and uh, batteries hooked up and little light and all that fun stuff. But uh, I got to put my feet up and uh, and relax and have a great conversation with, a, with an old friend, guy I consider a brother that I love very much. And uh, he's, he's a great, great person. Um, and he's got a great show of his own just, I'll tell you, just to be able to, to be able to be here and do this and, and talk to guys, um, that you've looked up to and, you know, have been, you know, mentors in your life is really something very, very special. So, um, we get into a whole bunch of things, but, um, it's more of an interview where he's interviewing me about some things. And so, um, I, you know, I've been asked by people out there if, they could interview me on my show before and you know that's not what Brian asked for but I've got to use it for a show today because uh, I didn't have anything going on uh, besides moving the entire week so if you guys um, love this go out there leave it a five-star review on Apple if you really really love it and you got some coin you want to throw our way you can go to patreon.com slash radical pod um, or go support him he's got uh, yeah, he's doing a whole bunch of stuff over there and um, you can find all the links uh, to his podcast in the notes uh, here on the show. So anyway, without further ado, my conversation with Roots 16 Grind, Brian Plummer. That time to have that honest dialogue. And one of the things I kind of share with people when I talk to them and then like, I'll give you one. And this is probably something I should wait when we actually start talking. But my niece called me when all that crap was going down. I'm not even aware of it, dude. I was like busy doing something. Wait, like yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea, man. None. Yeah. It's crazy. We probably should just wait to get all that. We'll, we'll probably get it. I'm, I'm already recording on my end. Are you? Okay. All right, man. So, uh, <laughs> dang. You know what? Let's just, I'm just going to hit record, dude. Yeah. It, right. You, you got to just hit What's it. Up, Shane? Go, what up, BP? <laughs> hey, man. I'm glad that you could do this. I, I know it's kind of, you got to be moving in your house. You're doing all your stuff. You took the time and, I think we're both comfortable sitting in our messy room. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you what, area. you know, you know I'm gonna, I would jump through damn fire for you, brother. I love you. Oh, and yeah, like, man. Well, we actually been through fire together. Yeah, so we, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we set and, some fires, but uh, yeah. yeah, I really appreciate you doing this, man. And for you all, let you know, and I'll probably do an intro on in the show at some point, but let you all know i'm talking to shane hazel shane and i were in the marines together we're both at first force reconnaissance company uh we spent time in the iraq war together we're in the same platoon did deployment we also went over with the company in an initial movement so we spent a lot of time together in those aspects and you know shane and i obviously have stayed in touch uh over the years and shane has been i'll let him go through his whole repertoire but the big reason I want to talk to Shane, and I think it's important that you all kind of give him an opportunity to listen to some of his points is, you know, Shane puts his about himself out there. He's a person that wants to give every American the opportunity to have as much liberty as possible as that was promised to them in the Constitution. And with that said, Shane, you got the floor, man. Oh, man. What a what a gracious intro. Um, for my audience, this is Brian Plummer. Uh, he kind of explained uh, what what we've been through together. Um, uh, Brian has been on a, a show, if you're a longtime listener, um, on Radical, actually, when I first got started again. Yeah. Uh, early in 2020, probably April-ish, man. It's, boy, are you kidding there, yeah. me? What the fuck happened this year? Can I cuss on your show? 
Absolutely, okay. man. Yeah, you, you can cuss all over my show. I don't yeah. know if I get the right, you know, hey, this is a bad word one, but I just roll with it. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, <laughs> uh, on, on, for, my, for my guys, I know they, they know we're, we're going to be very adult in our, in our conversation yeah. here. But also, you know, we, we, if, if this is the most outrageous thing we're talking about, you know, if, if that's I, I always tell people that, look, man, the murderers and the thieves that are out there running this, you know, god awful government, you know, if, if you're offended by my cussing and not by that kind of stuff, you, you need to go and get a reality check but yeah man i'm uh, i guess um we just wrapped up um the georgia senate race down here people hate my guts it's it's amazing um you know i wasn't even on the ticket this time around and um you know it was a runoff between uh david purdue and john ossoff and you know i i ran um you know at you know at the call of the lp uh i joined the lp back in 20 late 2018 and um they asked me to come in and, and be uh part of their convention and i was you know i was like yeah you know i'll come in somebody nominated me for senate and got the nomination and obviously uh you know we november 3rd came around we we took or stole as they, everybody else will tell you right uh you stole the the democrat votes and you stole the republican votes and i was just like dude you know these are libertarians. Libertarians don't vote for you dipshits anymore. And, and I don't want to be, you know, totally offensive to maybe some of the people out there that are, you know, either neocons or, or, you know, progressives or conservatives or whatever, you know, you find yourself as like, you're all welcome here, but we're going to speak the truth. And so, you know, like we earn every damn vote we get, um, ended up getting 115,000 votes without spending a so awesome, dude. dime, man. And so, you know, it, it, it really, and it was two times the, you know, Joe Jorgensen, who was a libertarian nominee for president, um, you know, we did at least two times what she got, I think. And, you know, it, it kind of sent ripples through not only, I think, the liberty circles, but definitely down here in the South. And, and, and I mean, gosh, I mean, we're still seeing what's the, the after effects of what happened. And so... You know, I I invited David Perdue, the Republican, and John Ossoff, the Democrat, onto my show to sit down for an hour and try to earn a hundred and fifteen thousand votes. Give them give them a policy, give them something to you know to to energize them to say, hey, you know what, I'll go cast a vote for you. And I had you know Rand Paul came in, and tested the waters, and you know had a great conversation with him. But at the end of the day, Rand Paul had to sit here and say. Yeah, man, there's no difference between the Republicans and the Democrats anymore, but there's we're slightly better yep. in our. I remember listening to that episode, man. Yeah, and, our, and it was a little it was bit disappointing on that end. Oh, it, it did, right? Like as soon as somebody, you know, you can be polite and you can still kind of grill a guy and be like, "There's no difference," and he's like, "Well, we're slightly better," but the whole time he only Rand only got to talk about himself. He didn't get to, he didn't talk about David Perdue and his record. Nope. And so nope. you know, what I tell people all the time is, Hey, you know, look, David Perdue, if you're, if you're a red blooded American, right. And, and part of the MAGA crowd and all, whatever it is, and you consider yourself a patriot and you don't know the constitutional voting score of your representatives, whether they're in the U S house or the U S Senate and you vote, you're doing everybody in this country a disservice because that voting record should be should be an A, right? Like if, if you go to work and you don't perform, you know, 10% of the time, most of the time you're going to get fired, right? Like if, if you're, right. a, if, if you're a B person in this world these days, you're getting fired, man. And these guys, David Perdue had a 20% constitutional voting record. And you try to tell Republicans this and they're like, no way. And they just don't want to be, you know, found out as gullible, right? Just listening to the rhetoric and listening to the talking points. And I was like, yeah, man, do you understand his whole, his, his 2020 and his overall scores are less than Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And yeah. you just, you, you, you point this out to people and they, they can't believe it or they do believe it. And they go, man, I had no idea. And so, you know, we, we went out and we kept, you know, we, we invited him on and they didn't show up. I talked to David for an hour on the phone one day. He said he was coming. Rand Paul came in. He saw what was going to happen to him and like a chicken shit coward, you know, that can send men and women off to never ending war year after year after year. He can't sit down and defend his constitutional voting record with 
people in the liberty crowd and try to gain those votes. The people that are standing for peace and liberty and free markets and the Constitution. You know, like you can't spend an hour trying to make something happen with these people. And he only needed in the in the, in the overall runoff or the overall general, he only needed like seventeen thousand votes. Man, it's yep. nuts. Well, I mean, so we're going to roll back a little bit because I, I want to make sure people who are kind of like on the fence or just not informed there. There's someone saying, yeah, I want to remove myself from the talking heads. I want to, but I need good information. Where do I go? So you said a lot of great things that you were referencing. So a little bit more background sure. here. So Shane has run for office. Uh, actually, technically you're running three times because you're running for governor. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, the, Jesus. Yeah. We'll get to that. Like, that's crazy. But I, I, I'm really excited about it. So Shane uh, ran uh, for a representative, actually as a, initially as a Republican ticket. Yep. I tried to try to get on that one, and you know he's not bought and paid for, and that's what makes you scary. Because you are a principal person. I can say that personally because I ha- I known you for years. I've worked with you in the most stressful environments. You are a principal person, and you're going to say something, and you're going to hold true, and that's what makes you scary. Is you can't be bought, and it sounds so odd to say that when someone's running for office right like we're we accept as citizens that our politicians are going to be corrupted but we're just going to try and find maybe the least corrupt one and and the fact that Ron, Rand paul kind of like alluded to that well we're just not as corrupt as we got that's how i kind of looked at it and i'm like you're still corrupt corruption's corruption um so shane shane has run for office there he's actually run under the libertarian ticket for senate he's the guy that truly uh, is being blamed for the reason why the the two Republicans had to go to a runoff with the Democrats. There's nothing saying that you know Shane took Republican votes. He might have took more Democrat votes. We don't know that. And I explain this to people like when I go to Libertarian meetups, I, I believe it or not, I meet more Democrats, former Democrats, than I do Republicans. At least that's my experience. And m- people, they I mean they're just like, I don't believe it. It's like, well, believe it because I'm talking to people who absolutely were on that side. Because it's supposed to be the party of peace, the party of anti-war, the party of this, and obviously they're not. Well, Republicans are supposed to be the party of you know fiscal con- conservation, yeah. right? Small government. Oh my gosh! And the crazy part about it with our you know politicians is they will tell you up front, and the you know with all these laws that they pass, and I think the Nancy Pelosi example is probably the best one. Well, we need to pass it so we know what's in it. And they tell the American people that, well, that makes sense. We, well, yeah, we got to pass it so that yeah, we can read it. Right. <laughs> it's because people don't know how a freaking bill moves. And so I want to make sure, like, so when you talk about a constitutional score, what does that mean? How, how does someone get that? Sure. And, and why is that bad when it's below a certain percentage rate? So you, a lot of you guys may have heard of the John Burr Society. They're the guys that do it. If, if you don't know the John Burr Society – these guys are damn, they're, they're like me in terms of understanding the Constitution. Like they are autistic or asperger whatever, you know, like this focus and attention to detail on a governing contract. And they're not a PAC, so they're, you know, they're, they're not giving money to candidates. And they all they do is, I mean, if you've ever been to any of their meetings, I've been to a couple of them. And they are very, very well-studied people. They're historians, and I mean truly you know they they are published historians and the one thing that they really 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 fucking care about is the constitution of the united states and i will tell you right now i'm an anti-federalist so when i give credence to you know basically the federalists if, if we're talking about you know 1776 uh onward you know where or i should say 1786 where they you know we start to have the constitutional convention i think the constitution was a coup by the, what the anti-federalists called the aristocratic combination, and this I know that I'm, I'm stretching an answer out, but to, to no, you're good. This I, is good stuff. People I will you can understand yeah. that. I want people to, to understand that I don't agree with JBS, but JBS has dialed in this constitutional voting metric. So when they take a vote on any bill, whether it's the Senate or whether it's Congress, they grade that representative as how he voted. Is it in line with the Constitution or is it outside the Constitution? So example, right? These ridiculous, you know, continuing resolutions that we've had for basically, I don't know, since we started the war back in 2001, um, you know, that's not going to be constitutional. Why? Because first and foremost, they aren't 
spending bills. It's not a budget. It, it, it doesn't, you know, coincide with Article 7, Section 1 of the Constitution. And so they'll score it. Hey, this person voted in line, or I should say in line with the Constitution by not passing the bill for, with their vote, or they voted in line with it um, or out of line with it by voting for it. And, you know, you, you see this over and over, and they explain every one of these for every representative in the U.S. Congress and the U.S. Senate. And so it is a great metric for looking at it with real, you know, honesty about where these people are spending their time and their vote. And you see, like, you know, I mean, here in Georgia, you know, everybody's like, it's a red state. Well, when I found out, like, you know, when I was, I ran for U.S. Congress uh, in 2018 against this guy named Rob Woodall, he had a 50%. You know, like that's it's a hell of a lot better than David Perdue, but at the same time, you're you're not doing your job half right. the time, and this and it's important because that is how we are supposed to interact with each other. These this is the rules for interacting as a as a group of people. This is what keeps you know order. This is what keeps us from descending into chaos, not anarchy, but chaos, and. I, you know, it's if you're if you're gonna have you know a different set of rules for some people and not for the same you know for the common people, you're going to get chaos. And this is where you know we're at because of all these arbitrary policies and laws and bureaucracy and you know war and er- this is all all of them. And so you know this is this is how I came to understand. Uh, you can find it. It's uh, 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 American. Let's see. It's JBS, oh, Freedom Index is what it's called. Uh, the Freedom Index, uh, and I believe it's either .com or .org. But you'll look on there and you'll just kind of, uh, you know, type in, you know, where you are and uh, who your representatives are. Or if you don't know, you know, go ahead and, you know, make sure you fix that. But it's it's really just a, a quick place to learn a little bit about how they vote. And then there's a couple other places that I really like to go. There's a, um, there's a website called Open Secrets. And Open Secrets will tell you, how everybody is funded, right? Whether it's a PAC that's getting giving them money, whether it's a private person, um, you know, giving them money, and you can see how much they donate. So, you know, there, there's a paper trail a mile long in terms of FEC reporting and all this kind of stuff for these guys. Um, and the last one I like, um, this guy named uh, Jonathan Bidlack started it. He was, um, I want to say, the treasurer for one of uh, Ron Paul's last runs. And spending tracker is basically how much money has your representative voted to authorize, whether it passed or didn't pass. Like how much money has this guy authorized with his votes? And so between those three things, you can really paint a great picture of what somebody's doing in DC and and why they're doing what they're doing. And I'll tell you what, like the, even here in the state of Georgia, every Republican here might enjoy a 60, maybe just a, a pinch over that um, in terms of their constitutional voting record. And that's Republicans. That's just, this is why the GOP is now dead. Right. I, I agree with you. I I, I, uh, I tell you what, I, I had hopes for Trump. I think he was saying some good things. I didn't necessarily agree with uh, some things as he was coming in, um, but I was really looking at the war. Let, let, you know, talk about that. It's it's never been declared by Congress. And I right. think the problem too is, you know, the power of the country is really, in my opinion, a, a pyramid. So it starts with the people, and it works its way up to where this president is not this monarch where he can just, uh, you know, do whatever he wants or she can do whatever he wants. If we ever elect a woman president, and you know, three separate powers of government equal but separate. And that's the other thing I think people forget. And then when you look at it, we have given up the power because we elect these idiots and on their people who aren't even qualified to run half their lives. And that's, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're like, oh, yeah, hey, they have a great chant. They they just they just are really, you know, handsome or really good looking. Uh, they got all these, you know, friends and fans. They have all these followers on social media. They got to be great. And they get in an office and they just get bought and paid for. And then like Congress, you know, the, the whole cowardice of the whole war thing where they just, well, we're just going to shift that over to, you know, the president and, you know, it's, it's not really a war, but they've been funding it funny. I mean, we were just printing money off. Like, Oh, I don't think the dollars really worth anything. I think we just add zeros in a digital environment and say, Oh, look, we got more money. Here you go. People need to wrap their head around the fact that this year we went in to, well, I should say we spent one third 
of the entire U.S. history's over 240 damn years debt in one year. Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> go, yeah. Like, go yeah, right. it's figure like, it out. Okay. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It, yeah. And that's the thing is like they, they Congress has abdicated all their damn power. You know, now you've got Senate, you know, trying to, you know, th th that'll put forth bills. And you know, obviously nobody reads anything anymore and they just vote on it. They're like, oh, yeah, what the fuck ever? Because why? Because they're comfortable. They make one hundred and seventy thousand right. dollars a year and they can retire after after a term. And you're sitting there I, going I, like. Well, yeah, no shit. Like, why would you, you know, like the incentive to do whatever these people want you to do so that they, you'll just keep getting reelected. So you have a cake job where you go and schmooze with people and eat fancy fucking dinners all the time. Get on a board, you know, do all that kind of Dude, stuff. And, yeah, yeah, it's gross, man. Crazy. It, you yeah. know, and you mentioned bills, man. And, and that's something my last podcast I brought out because I'm going to slowly but surely bring more kind of liberty stuff in. I, I kind of been doing that. And on my website, you can go to Congressional Bill. There will be two bills on there that about outside kind of stuff because obviously my podcast is a lot about outdoor stuff. But I, I walk through the whole process of the bill and you know where you could go, like congress.gov and GovTracker, the two ones that I mentioned. People need to really get involved because, honestly, I don't think most of our elected leaders even read a bill. They poll it and go, okay, well, I'm going to vote this way based off whatever the poll is. Well, and and the, whatever the conglomerate of the group is, and who 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 are my who, who are my guys who are calling me, telling me if I don't vote for this, I don't get money. Right, like that's that's what they do. If if you're if if you think that these guys, you know, don't call their biggest supporters or have their biggest supporters calling them, because let's face it, most of their funding, you know, their biggest supporters or protections through bureaucratic policy and other bullshit is wrapped into these bills, whether they're a spending bill or whether, you know, they're, they're, you know, passing a law and those people pay like they call them and say, Hey, you need to get this through and you need to, you, you need to vote yes or no. Right. And that's, that's the truth because when election time comes around, they want that money. Money buys air, money buys print, money buys all this kind of stuff. And I'll tell you, you know, from experience, is if you're not spending money in media, they don't give a shit about you, man. They will they will completely black you out. They are not there to be objectionably truthful. They are not there. You know, obviously, nobody trusts any, the, most of the media anymore. But that's what yeah. they do in terms of like third party candidates that aren't paying them. You know what? Would they spend two hundred trillion dollars just on this part of the election, the runoff? And you're like, man, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it's nuts. That money's come from from so many areas of influence and you, you know, I, it, what kind of bothers me. And one of the things that I just was like, whenever I first heard libertarian, or I heard, you know, libertarian party, you didn't really take it serious. You're like, what is that? You, I didn't either, and I think man. that's one of the things most people, when they never really, they just, all they know is, you know, blue or red, blue or red. And then when you start diving in, it's like, Whoa, wait a second. These people actually want to give me more freedom or better yet, actually give me the freedom I actually deserve based off of the fact there are my natural rights. I mean, yeah. And people are fearful that they're like, well, we don't have government. Everything's going to collapse. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, what's, what's Eric July say? <laughs> Fuck them. Ho ass roads. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, man. It yeah. is crazy. People that they, that, and it has just been a big ploy where government, and that's why both parties are the same because they're just, you know, different angle of how they're working to control you. And the argument is who has power over the other. Like you're seeing these discussion on social media and they're just idiotic. They're not even, with any real substance. And you know what? I would really like to, and I think it'd be great for our listeners for you kind of like discuss you know, what happened at the Capitol. Um, there's a lot of social media out there. Like, see, like the, the, the guy with the freaking uh, Buffalo hat, you know, you got people like, you sure. know, Hey, Q sent him was one of those things. And then you had uh, where, you know, he might be Antifa. Yes. Then you have, well, he's a full Trump supporter. There's all sorts of propaganda on that one dude right now because he's the most recognizable one. So right. what's going on? What happened without what? How do you, why do you see that that happened? And then, you know, where do we go from there? Well, I, I think if you, if you seen, um, the opening bit last night for Tucker Carlson, man, guy, I think you nailed it. Um, and I, I was thinking the same thing. I, I kind of did a, a Facebook live. Uh, I had so many people well, I watched just, it. Yeah. Yeah. People just texted me right and left, man. Hey, you know, I'd really like to get your thoughts on what's going on right now because this, I mean, people are freaked the fuck out, man. And yeah, like it's shameful, man. I mean, it's, it's sad that that happened. And 
you know, someone he said today on social media, and a really good dude, and I'm not trying to, but he said, you know, I'm just so embarrassed being American right now. I said, you know what? I'm not embarrassed being American. No. I'm embarrassed about Americans doing these things that are embarrassing. Yes. And, and, and I'll tell you, man, this, so this is, I want people to see this, you know, th- th- everybody thinks that, you know, history is through a single lens and most of the time it's the victors, right? But let's, let's, let's understand this year, you know, I have seen what I consider a psyop on America. There is, there's so much information. There's so much misinformation. There's truth sprinkled on, you know, complete bullshit. And then there is, you know, a whole bunch of truth with a lacing of bullshit. And so you've got, you've got this you know, climate where people have been locked down, their livelihoods have been destroyed. They are all pissed the fuck off. And they, rightly so, because when you are, you know, when you're labeled non-essential by your government and yeah, you're told not you're to non-essential. Yeah. And this fear fucking, you know, fear mongering where they're like, yeah, man, this, this, you know, you, you would coronavirus basically, you would think people were falling over dead, like at, you know, 40, 50%. And that wasn't the case, right? We found out that, yeah, you know, if you're old and you're kind of on your fucking way out anyway, like people do, they die, man. If they get a pneumonia, whether they get a cold, whether they get a flu, whatever, like old people who are sick die every year. And yes, I know some, some, you know, people are talking about statistics being a little higher, but my, I, I think what you're seeing is after decades and decades and decades of a government using force and coercion against peaceful people, whether it's drugs or guns or whatever, like these are all rights. They're not, they're not liberties. They are rights. And, and, and a right is something that is a, a, that predates any government ever existing was what man walking around smoking plants before government existed. Hell yeah, they were, were yeah, they, that, were they sharpening yeah. spears? Yeah. They were, they, you know, putting together, uh, you know, plows and stuff like that and, and working the land and hunting and gathering before governments existed. You're damn right. They were. And so if it existed before them, then they have the right to do it in, in somewhere, whether they know that or not in the back of their brain, they feel this kind of stuff. And so People who you know use cannabis aren't aren't criminals. They're not murdering. They're not raping. They're not killing. And if they are, they are a criminal. But that the the smoking of you know or ingesting or whatever uh, with cannabis doesn't make you a criminal. For God's sakes, no more than owning a fully automatic machine gun makes you a criminal, right? You have the rights to defend your life, liberty, and property. And that's not in this country. That is every human on this planet has that right. So when they are abused by the system, where the system claims to be a victim, which it can't because it's a legal fiction, you know, you start to see these people get agitated. We had this this summer, and, and trust me, I'm not defending BLM more than I'm you know, going to defend the, the MAGA nation that went into the nation's capital, right? Like, but I understand I understand that a lot of people in urban communities are pissed off with law enforcement. They have had their lives destroyed, you know, people destroyed by the government and, you know, being the most incarcerated people in the world with, you know, a a fraction of the population. Land of the free. That's crazy. Right. So those people are super pissed off. Lots of them die. Lots of them get beat the fuck up by police and they get caged and, they're sick of it and I get it on the other hand you've got every you know every and I'll tell you right now understand what election laws you have in your state most people don't pay any attention to election laws like here in Georgia we have the most draconian damn election laws and I don't say that you know as hyperbole it's literally the hardest thing to do is get on the ballot if you're not a Democrat or Republican in the state of Georgia and even if you do by chance get on the damn ballot there is a runoff system down here that guarantees that you're not going to be even considered for that seat. So you have Republicans who see, and I should say, let's, let's just say Trumpers, because the GOP is not the Trumpers. It's not the MAGA nation. It's not even close. So you've got these people who see their dude, who is, you know who they view as an outsider, get in, and he is just beat 
to death 24-7, 365 for four years. And then all of a sudden on election night, some weird shit happens, man. And I will, I'm not going to sit here and say Trump won or Trump lost. I have no idea. But I'll tell you right now, our elections in terms of the machines and how they count and how they access you know, uh, people who are, are monitoring, those people are super pissed. So they, they, they feel like they're getting shut out on social media, which they are, um, and nobody hears them. So what's their, what's their final straw? Right. Like it's it's this election. We're done. Right. Like they have no confidence in the system. They have no confidence in the police. They have no p- confidence in the bureaucrats. They have no confidence in the voting. It is literally a banana republic now. And when you have this much frustration and you have this much departure from the Constitution and our our rights and this intrusion and violence, violence begets violence or as Ron Paul called it, blowback. And so what, yeah. what you're seeing is blowback. The people are done. And rightly, I, I think rightly and, and righteously, you can be super pissed and say, look, you guys got to change it. And I'll tell you, you know, the tyrants don't listen. You know, and that's the thing is they don't listen. They double down and they double down and they double down. And this is what I want to get across to everybody because I hadn't really thought of it until last night. I was doing a little, you know, thought experiment. And... These are acts of war. When they violate the rights of the people, those are acts of war on a scale of over 300 million here in the United States alone. And so when you see acts of war over and over and over again perpetrated on your countrymen, understand that maybe you're okay right now and you're still, you know, you guys are putting ends together, but there are some people who aren't. There are some people who have lost their jobs or their entire livelihood that they spent decades and decades and decades putting together, sacrificing, working their ass off, you know, getting up before dawn and going to bed after their family's asleep. Like that kind of dedication to to grinding out a little bit of freedom on this rock flying through space. And they just fucked them. And maybe they invaded yeah. their house or maybe they, you know, they kicked in their door and killed their brother or their sister or their girlfriend over a plant. Maybe it wasn't even their house and they got the wrong house. That's the thing is these are acts of war and they're, those people, they're desperate. They are holding on to reality by a thread, man, and they don't know any other way to express themselves than violence now because nothing else has worked. And that's where I get to is like, damn it, man. Like I want to sit here and tell everybody no, but listen, I haven't been aggressed upon as hard as a lot of other people have because I don't let it happen. And but some people, they let it happen. They let it happen. They let it happen. And where are they, man? we're, We're sitting at this precipice of, I don't know, man, I I feel like we just do this over and over in history because this just keeps fucking happening. And you're just like, well, I guess those of you that want to go and kill each other are going to go kill each other. And I hate to be that guy, but like, man, I see it now. And it's just like, man, I don't know. I I, I pray for peace. You you know, I'm glad you said that because I want to make clear to people listen, because I I know you like, I want to be very clear here. Shane's not trying, he's given dialogue and he, he, he's not trying to incite violence. Like no. that's one of the things people, when they, they listen to just like, if we just took a clip, they're like, Oh man, this guy's just trying to incite violence. Not absolutely. You're trying to do opposite, but you're also understanding. And what I love about talking with you, Shane is we can have hard discussions. Like yeah. you brought up, like the problem is the people, there's this like thinking like, Oh, if hey, if I support the troops, well, how about we support troops by bringing them home because these wars are freaking stupid, you know? Yeah. Like, we've been at war for 20 years, and, you know, both of us are veterans. We fought in wars. We deployed, you know, all that. And when you actually look at this and go, what is going on? And I've, you know, after I got out, I served as a contractor in, in, in different environments, uh, supporting DOD. And, and you're looking at it, okay, it doesn't seem like anybody's really trying hard to actually end this. And I don't mean that out of a dis- disrespectful way. But it just seems more of a business money machine than it is a, hey, here is what success looks like. Let's achieve this. Because I guarantee you, 
you give these people, these these generals and these troops, hey, this is what success is, boom, a clear, no kidding, like one, two sentence, this is success, this is what it looks like, go, they will achieve it. No doubt in my mind, we have the best military hands down in the world. They will achieve it. The problem is we do not give them that clear, uh, fine line. So if we don't give them that, they shouldn't be over there because when we lose somebody, yeah. I mean, it breaks my heart. I don't even have to know them. It breaks my heart because I don't know how you write that letter because they're not dying. You know, it, it, as lovely once most we want to say is that, hey, they're protecting the country. Are they? Well, I mean, you look how free we are. You, I mean – your businesses have to wear masks and, and follow strict cleaning and can only run at 50% capacity or, or whatever the, the arbitrariness is of it of 2020 and 2021. And you're just like, we're not free, man. Whatever we, whatever we've been doing for 20 years overseas is not working. It's not making any, uh, yeah. we, we've got, you know, we, we've got the, the, the government we deserve for one, but most of those people, you know, minus maybe Thomas Massey, Rand Paul, Mike Lee, um, Andy Biggs and Justin Amash, who are the only dudes on Capitol Hill with an A average in terms of constitutional voting record, like that's a that's a problem. And yeah. you know, I, I I agree with you. Like you know, we haven't declared war. What we're doing overseas is absurd. You know, if you guys haven't heard Scott Horton, um, man, I'll tell you what he's a he's a, he's a savant when it comes to understanding you know, the, the history of the Middle East and what's transpired there and why, obviously, you know, we as a government corporate cabal um, of international interest at this point, right? Like, that's what it is. They say it's right. American interest. Well, you know, it's not even American interest anymore. It's international interest. And that's why when they pass these bailouts and you get, you know, a fraction of a, a, a 900, what was uh, was it two trillion this time around? It was, yeah, it was something stupid, man. I, I'll be honest with you; like, I don't even look at the number anymore. I just know it's like crazy. It's, it's just mostly mon- going to <laughs> it's monopoly money. And, yeah, it's crazy. It is absolutely You're going insane. to women's like, studies in Pakistan. What are they studying? Is women's studies yeah. just code word for like we're funding sex trafficking? Because I feel like the, that's what murderers and thieves and kidnappers fucking do: is they just take our money and they export it to wherever you know they're running these you know. Really, I don't, this is what I think is the black market, right? I don't think drugs is black market. I think the pedophile and sex, you know, sex kidnapping trade, I think that's black market yeah. shit, right? The, the human trade um, market is, is black market. And I think, you know, these, prob- these guys are probably as deep in it as they can be given, you know, guys like A.G. Barr, um, have been around since the seventies running around with George Herbert Walker Bush. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm long winded on some of this kind of stuff. It's just like, there's so much history here in terms of what's transpired. And it's like, man, we got to focus here. And if there, are, I, I always, you know, put this out there too. It's like, Hey, if you're thinking about joining the military, man, we need you to fight here. And that that's not in, in uniform. Like we need you here on the ground working in your communities, trying to affect people's minds with liberty. Just just right. give, them, give them that pill, right? Like, hey, here's that first pill. Here's a question for you. You know, go scratch that itch that you got. And, you know, that's, I'll tell you what, that's what I, that's what I'm hopeful about, honestly. Yeah, I, I, I really, I do everything I can to um, try to, have people understand that you really support the troops, you know, make sure their lives are worth something, just putting them out there to put them out there because it looks good for voting, you know, like, so, Hey, I get more votes if I have a war going on. Yeah. Cause that's again, like, well, I'm going to support the troops and the same thing with law enforcement. I have buddies who are law enforcement. I mean, it, it breaks my heart because they're, you know, they're good cops, yeah. but they also will tell you, yeah, there are bad cops. And a lot of them will say it's the union's fault, man. Like I, I have yeah. had talks with them. They'll, they'll say, Hey, it's the union's fault. And then, um, well, they don't you know, know what they don't know either. Right. I mean, and, and, and I, I try to, I try to, like I said, you know, trying to be understanding of people's past. Like I didn't, I, I remember where I was when I read John Taylor Gatto, I, we were sitting there on the Mech, right in Fallujah. And we mm-hmm. had that giant green tent. You remember like the, the circus tent oh, yeah. we were hanging out in? It had, I was like, reading the Odyssey when you are probably reading that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I was laying in my rack and it was after, uh, it must have been like mid to late December because we were about to wrap up shop over there. 
and yeah. we got we had a little downtime. Finally, got a shower after a month or whatever it was. And I was laying in this rack, and I'm reading John Taylor Gatto, who's talking about you know where people are, are indoctrinated by their government here in the United States and where it came from. And you know they're like, yeah, man, they did all this kind of stuff back in Prussia, you know, in in the 1700s and 1800s, so that everybody would want to go fight for the state. They'd feel patriotic. And you're like, oh shit, you know, like I'm in the middle of a war over here like the biggest battle that there was and you're like man i got fucking had but you know like that the cops don't like they're like every other american that's been indoctrinated by their government and has you know 24 7 news blasting into their little brains you know it's it's you're gonna be this way or you're gonna be that way and it's culture driven or the home you grew up driven you're gonna be this way or that way and they're never ever ever really exposed to what true liberty is all about and right. you know it's just these you know it's just all rhetoric and platitudes and and nothing you know nothing of meat and real substance where you can dive in and go man you know like anti-federal so oh, we never heard of those dudes in in any of our groups you know you may have heard of some of the federalists those guys man they're criminals damn aristocratic combination wanted you know all the all the cash cows they could have out there so that they could feed themselves off of taking people's money by force and coercion. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I, 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 I always learn something more when I talk to you too. And, and, and I'm hoping everyone is really capturing and write some of the stuff down that Shane's throwing out there because you should be looking this stuff up. This is stuff you need to dive in. And I love a little bit earlier, you mentioned about getting community involvement. And I agree. We, we need people here to get involved and one of the things that I did, because I, I just got tired of being the guy, angry guy on the couch, going, I can't believe this happened, right? <laughs> right. You no, know, so you're like, I got to do something. So, yeah. you know, and I got to also look at reality, like, hey, what does my time management look like? I mean, I, I do all this stuff. I do my brand stuff. I actually have a job job. And, you know, obviously I have kids and wife and, you know, got to balance it all. And I know you respect that. You, oh, you're like, bro. You're, same thing, you're a producer. And I started, a, there's a, for 10 years, I've actually been trying to start a community emergency response team here in my village. 10 years, dude. And it's because they're like, hey, we'd love to do it, but we need someone to take ownership of it, which is understandable. And I was running all over the world at that time. And finally, I had to a point in my life I didn't have to do that. And so I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll do it. My degree's in it. I, I got all the courses for it. Good. And then I took ownership of it. What I love about it is it's starting the dialogue where you're taking something that we have in common and we want to do good for the community. Everyone there. Do you, I really believe that every one of us voted the same. Absolutely not. I can tell you that just by talking to some of the people, but I know at our core, we want to have a very good community and want to look out for each other. And it starts there. Then you start sharing your ideas and exchanging those things. And you have the hard conversations. You're going to disagree, but Hey, how about just respect each other after that disagreement instead of, you know, the F U's and I'm going to oh, unfriend sure. you or, or worse where violent starts. And, that's where we're at. And the thing about it is we're fighting over like, you know, the whole brave heart, like, you know, scraps off the table, you yeah. know, like you really are. Yeah. You're not even fighting for the thing that matters. You're, you're fighting for a candidate who is really oppressing you. I don't care which candidate you voted for. You voted red or blue. They're an oppressor. That's my honest opinion. Yeah, voting you out of fear with me all you want. Right. And you're voting for which oppressor do you approve of? That's it. <laughs> or you're less fearful of. Yeah, I mean, that's really it. And and then from there, you just accept it because they're on your side. And that's, oh, yeah. I mean, the reality that people, I, I just, the like people who are educated, highly educated, years of school can sit there and say, hey, we just need to vote blue no matter who. <laughs> yeah. Like, that is a no kidding thing. And I was like, okay, that's dumb. That's that, it's really it's, dumb. It's You're an admission, power man. To people as long as they have a blue sign. It, it, here, here's the, I'll tell you right now, and I'll tell you, as I don't care if you're a Democrat, I don't care if you're a Republican, I don't care if you're a Libertarian. If somebody doesn't earn your fucking vote, don't right. vote. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm not gonna tell you what. If somebody doesn't earn my vote, I don't vote for them. You, you, you don't get to, you don't get a pass because you're not them, right? Like I'm not. Right. I, I'm the, when I stopped voting out of fear, and I think it was 2008, and I. It, I left the poll going, holy shit, that was great. But uh, right before I left, you know, I had that moment of hesitation. I'm telling you, like, I remember it cl 
you know, plain as day, like, am I not doing my duty in the back of my head? Like, am I not doing my duty? Am I taking this for granted that I have a choice? And then I said, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice, Shane. They have put two people in, in, in front of you that you don't agree with. Is there another write-in? Sure, there was. Ron Paul. And I wrote in Ron Paul. And I was just like, look, when I walked out of there, man, I felt lifted. I felt like I didn't have this weight on my shoulders anymore. I just did something that I never thought I would have done in a million years because the system told me I had to do it. Over right. and over. It's your patriotic duty. A lot of people fought and died for your right to vote. Well, you know what, man? I don't have I wish I had somebody who was actually representing me. And right. th- I mean th- that weight, man, left right, if you're voting straight ticket, it's an admission. And I, this is what I should have started with. It's an admission that you first and foremost don't know every candidate. You don't. You definitely don't know what their voting record is or what their policies are. And you believe rhetoric. You watch too much or listen to too much mass media, mainstream bullshit propaganda. And you're just regurgitating, got to vote red, got to vote straight ticket, got to vote blue, got to vote Democrat. You know, like, no, you don't. It's the most important important election of our time. Oh, every time, right? Every damn yeah. time. And it's just like, yeah, man, uh, it, 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 you, you could be right. It's the most important election of our time, but it's, you know, that's every election. So nice cliche. <laughs> I, I look at it this way. Your vote is like, you know, the, like, you know, back in the day we had those, you know, handshake deals and they were a bond and your word meant something. Yeah. I still like my son and you know, I, I really preach that. Hey, your word means something. Yeah. And I look at it that way. Your vote is your tell of who you are. If, and what direction you want to go. And it's, it, to me, it's, it's almost where, yeah, you, you kind of, you know, I'm not saying this in a religious way, but it's like a belief, like, Hey, this is the person I feel confident that's going to represent me for the things I want to achieve. So if the things you want to achieve is have more power and oppress others, then that might be your person. Right. But if you're a person that's looking at, Hey, I want someone that actually is going to, you know, not intervene, have, you know, less government, let, try to have less control of my life because there really shouldn't be a lot of control in my life. I shouldn't have to, what I, one trick that I do with my son, cause I want to get a good grasp of taxes. My youngest son, Yeah. whenever he has snacks, like gold, <laughs> take a bite, whatever, <laughs> dude, I walk by and say, what's up government. Boom. You know, I'll think oh, you man, you're kidding. You walk away. <laughs> you're you know, you're like, messed up, isn't it? I know. They do that on paycheck. Every uh, paycheck, dude. Either they didn't it, earn that. I did. And here's, here's the one of two outcomes. Either he gets used to it or he hates the government, right? Uh-oh. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I said that one time, hey, man, don't be telling everybody I hate the government. What I'm trying to say is I want the government to be what it should be. And there's a rule book. I want them to follow the rule book. And, and that's all, you know, and that goes back to the bars with law enforcement and military, you know absolutely not anti-military or anti-law enforcement we want the accountability to happen the same accountability we want with our politicians military lives matter and i'm not saying that for a slogan i'm saying that because these people go out these are moms dads kids sons daughters we want their lives to mean something that's not just hey we're going to send two thousand troops in this one area and it's just a statistic like yeah. looking at this stuff and you and i have experienced that dude it's just a map on a board and like okay well you know all right, well, we got that up there, and and, and then you're you're in, 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 I'm not saying that we did this, but then it, it turns into an agitation to where you're hoping something happens, and you know we should be hoping that all right, we're not here to you know cause problems and and unleash violence, but when we do unleash violence, it is absolutely oh. violent, so no one else wants to do it again. Like, oh man, screw that, because and that was that's the whole point, Department of Defense, right? Right. I mean, that, that's really it. No, I, so, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, man, I mean, because I, I and, and think the same thing going back to law enforcement. I mean, it just I I hurt for my friends that are cops, man, because I don't want them to, you know, sit in their squad car and be shot at and or out with their families and, and be, you know, you know, victimized because they're yeah. they're just they're they're out there to try and do the best job that they can. And and they you know, I, they're trying yeah. to be the, the good cop, but the system is really pushing them not to be good cops. Yeah, and if, if they don't, if they don't ever learn, you know what the the basics are, right? Like, hey, man, 
you're you're here to protect rights first and foremost. That's it. Like you're here to stop the people who are murdering and thieving and raping and kidnapping and coercing and defrauding and vandalizing and thieving and and robbing people. Like that's your job. That's why in the beginning when we had peace officers, cops knew what they were doing was real damn dangerous, right? Like you're going after, you know, cowards who prey upon people, but if they're desperate enough, they'll use violence, right? Because they, they're used to force and coercion. And then something happened. Something changed, man. And it was, we're law enforcement now. And we're just going to, we're just going to do whatever the legislator tells us we have to do. That became a real problem because they didn't, you know, they didn't respect rights anymore. And they started looking at the peaceful people as cash revenue. Now, you know, it was a much easier job. You know, that, the, the war on drugs, obviously, is just one of those bountiful black market things because they can't stop it. So they know that, you know, if they go and they, you know, cage people and, and you know, make giant drug busts, it's going to be more revenue for their department. And so... I don't know. It, it got flipped up on his head, and I, and I feel bad that they don't know that kind of stuff. But I'll tell you, you know, hey, you know, as libertarians, we want you to be safer. You know, we want you to, we want you not to have to go after drugs and you know prostitution. We don't want you guys to have to go after you know people with guns, right? Like ATF and FBI and the rest of you guys. Look, you know, rights are rights, man, and bump stocks and fully automatic and suppressors and short barrel rifles, you name it, man. Like any really, you know, sop mod type of weaponry, that's part of our right to own it without asking permission or paying taxes or, you know, duties or whatever it is, uh, you know, stamps or it's like, you know, we, you guys got to back the fuck off, man. Like that's, you can't be in your community's private lives the way you are unless they're breaking like the, you know the mortal sin of force and coercion against other people it's crazy so what do you say to the individual who's kind of like on the fence and going wait a second um you start letting people just take drugs how they want and have the weapons that they want and then sell they body, their body how they want. I mean, you're going to have all these crimes. You're going to have it's going to go up. We're going to have a bunch of crazy people. Violence is going to go up. What do you say to that? I, I don't believe it. And I, I think it's fear-mongering so that they can control those markets. Those are markets, right? You own you. Um, Rothbard is a great read in terms of the philosophy on property and human expenditure of energy and life. And... When you toil and put your life into something, um, first and foremost, you own you, and whatever you find and change in nature, it, with you know, with your time and with your work and effort, is yours. You have a claim to these things. So, if you want to choose to, you know, get some cannabis and use it, man, as long as you don't do those things that I talk about, the murder, rape, assault, kidnapping, uh, theft, uh, you know, vandalism, th those things. If you don't do those things, I don't give a shit what you do. So there it is right there. There's still accountability. Right. And I think that's the piece that's missing. And this is one of the things I, I always had with being in the military and being in the Marines is people were freaking out because this group was going to be allowed in or this was going to be in. It's like, you know, the UCMJ isn't changing. There's still accountability. You still yeah. have to be a military person. So whatever the case may be, they change the hair rig or they, they do something yeah. that you just freak out. Like, wait a second. <laughs> Back in my day. There's accountability. Uh, I mean, it, it's just crazy how people just and, and you know and this goes back and i was one of them you know i, I was in when we used to didn't have name tags and yeah. then we had to go to name tags there was almost pure anarchy across the marine corps like name tags we freaked out freaked out i i never I mean, heard this brian media back then it would have been livid dude like oh man awesome, so dude. what Bring what back up what year Maybe there wasn't i don't <laughs> one of those jackasses going this is bullshit <laughs> well what year was that Oh my god, I don't even remember, dude. Like, dude, I'm, early uh, early nineties. Uh, it had to been because I came in eighty nine, so it was definitely. I believe it was right after my first four years. It was somewhere okay. in, you know year five through eight, probably. And yeah, it was a freak out. 
Absolutely. That's cr- I had never dude. heard that before, man. And, and oh that, that cracks me up. When you get to old Marines, dude, like, you know, <laughs> go, go hit them up. Hey, man. So, do you, and also the guys with the white t shirt, it was the same yeah. thing. Well, we're losing white t shirt. Like, why would you want a white t shirt? You're, you're supposed to be camouflaged, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody had a contract crazy, with Haynes. Man. But I mean, I think that really says, but I love the fact that you bring it out. Well, you still are accountable to society. And I, same thing with jobs. Like people are like, oh man, we're gonna have truck drivers going off the road, but they're still accountable because if they're if they're not accountable, they're not gonna have if, if they're not accountable, obviously those things are gonna happen. But an employer is gonna expect people just like they do with alcohol. I love you're this. gonna have to be sober when you're doing these things. Yeah, you could be doing and if it affects your job performance, then you're not gonna have a job here. That- uh, same thing with uh, you know, businesses. You know, when you look at businesses, you're gonna look at what appeals to you, what doesn't, what you're gonna be able to accept and, and do that. Like the whole mask thing is a, is a good example, like people freaking out with the mask. And I'm like this, you know what? If you don't want to wear a mask, don't go there. You have that choice, you know. Well, you know, I go there to get all my food. Well, you can go someplace else and get a food. I mean, there are places that I know there's gas stations out here. I want to throw them out oh, there. Oh, man. Like, I'll tell you what. I, I want to shout out to Wilkes Meat Market here in North Georgia in, in Ball Ground. Uh, I walked in there uh, to, to buy some dinner for Christmas, and none of their staff had on mask and I was I was so happy Brian I can't even begin to tell you you know the smiling faces the greetings the man I miss seeing people's smiles man I miss people yeah. being like I, I you know how we are we can't hear shit right because of all the damn right. you know loud noises but like you when when you see people's face and they're nice and they're courteous and they can talk to you while you're doing whatever you're doing right like and they treat you like you know you're their main effort you know and and that's the thing is like that's that's when 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 you get treated like that and you see people's faces like I was just like I was blown away man like this is awesome I I can't stand the fact that especially here in Georgia the bureaucratic nightmare that mom and pop and small business has been inundated with by these guys I mean, it's got to stop. And that's the thing is like here, like they're threatening people in terms of what they're doing with their business you right. know, by the Georgia Department of Health. And you're like, this has got, this cannot stand. And so I, I appreciate the businesses out there that are saying, no, you know what? This is our businesses or our livelihood. You can go get a damn warrant. Show me the law. Don't right. tell me about the executive order. Show me the law where this is happening. So yeah, man, it's uh, it, it, that's right. I mean, and the thing is, if you're a business and you believe your mask work and all that kind of stuff, and that's what you demand on your private property, your business, fine. Like that's cool. Like this, you with all this stuff, you know, it, you do. Like it's just because you have the right to do something doesn't mean in the private sector you're gonna get to do it anyway, right? You can't. Right. You can't just your employer's not gonna be cool with you doing heroin. Right, like, Absolutely. <laughs> or meth, or it, like, they're gonna like, nah, man, like, you're you're still gonna be that dude that is not employed anymore if you show up and, and and go against the wishes of your employer. Like, that's just the way it is. Yeah, I I, I think you you kind of hit on a note as well with the whole like the you're getting the full effect of the human side when people aren't masked up and I, you're not the only person that said that uh, one of the people that one of my colleagues uh, mentioned uh, just the same thing. He's like, I, I've always told people like, Hey, I'm smiling under my mask and he's, he's a, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it's sad. You're missing that human equation. And on top of it, it's just, re- let's just be honest here. Like whoever's listening to whatever state you're in country, wherever it's a game we're playing because when I go to a restaurant, we walk in, we go put our mask on. And as soon as we get the table and we're spinning, 98% of our time at our table, our mask is off. Right. But for some reason, that's okay. But well, as soon as magic. I walk through that door, I got to have it's a, it's a game we're playing. And I see that with a lot of places. And there's a lot of stores I see people walking around without masks. And I'm, I'm cool with that. I do it too. <laughs> or on their chin. You know, I mean, and, but it goes back to this way. So in, in out in my area, in Moore County, there's a group here that is like very anti mask and they're yeah. making everybody known. But where I think we lose opportunity when we talk about freedom and liberty and they're not, the people are talking about their rights. Well, people that wear masks, that's their right too. Sure. If you don't, and it, it works both ways. And that's what, that's the blue and red argument. And if you're just def, you know, beating down on the other person and saying you suck because you're, you're doing what I don't like, well, that's their choice. 
That's yeah. absolutely their choice. Why is it your business? Is kind of like all the things that we try and teach our kids. Hey, that's not stay, that's not your business. Stay out of that. We I remember hearing that so many times. Like, why was I concerned about what that person was doing, or why were they wearing those things, or whatever? Why is that your business? It's yeah. not. Oh, I, it, thought, I mean, not. as a as a guy that came over from the Republican Party, you know, my whole entire life, I was told at school, like, man. You know, say no to dope, and there was the D.A.R.E. program, and there was the constant commercials about, you know, if you smoke cannabis, or back when they called it marijuana, um, for ethnic slur reasons. Reaper, yeah, right? Like, you, know, you were just told, like, this is your brain on drugs. Any questions? You're like, I don't want to do that. Right, I remember that, those That wasn't my, right. when I finally got enough courage to try cannabis, I was like, what the fuck are they talking about? And I don't think that, like, most people who haven't done cannabis understand, like, Go try it. It's a plant. It's amazing. Like it is one of those things. Like if you're comfortable in your own skin and you trust yourself and you can, you know, be in a in a moment the first few times that you are getting used to it, that stuff is a mind opener. And on top of it, you get there, you get the secondary, you know, kick in the butt is like, what the fuck is the government talking about? This is a bad thing, man. I, I hang out. I, I talk to people. I love people. Oh, and my buddy, did. I think no for myself, and, and like you're just sitting there going, like, these are a bunch of motherfucking liars, man. <laughs> and, then, and that's what you have to come to the conclusion is, why would anybody make this feeling where you're accountable and you're loving and you're transparent and you're, you know, like some of the best people I know are cannabis users obviously within With within reason right like they have the the right. right time of day their shit's knocked out they're super successful people and you know they do it to either relax and unwind but at the same time think and like i think it's a thinking man's drug you know and Most i, I, I will call it a drug. realize too you oh, know what man. i'm saying it's kind of like the whole sex ring things like oh my god i can't believe it now you should They're, you know like this stuff shouldn't be surprising it, you want to hear my story about why I've never touched drugs, man? You've never touched cannabis? Ever. I've, I've never had a drug in my life, oh, dude. Go for, than, tell, you know, tell, I want to hear this. So I want to tell you the secret. Hey, parents, get, you know, get up. Really, You might want to tape this part. So I tried dipping and smoke <laughs> at the same time in seventh grade. Dude. Oh, bro, I was I at like a dance, and I was like, yeah, I tried that. I, tried, I was all like, yeah, what's up, dude? I'll, I'll try it. Oh, I never been so sick uh, like right now i'm starting to like feel it in my gut I, i'm laughing because i know that feeling man i did oh the goodness. same thing i was like dude if i cannot handle tobacco i'm so terrified what anything else that enters my body would do to me dude so i never i never tried it dude it just wasn't one of those things i was like no nah, i'm good like all my buddies they used to go when i in this neighborhood i lived in uh, a good buddy of mine his name was jeremy and uh my friend james uh who i was really close with growing up they used to go, his mom grew pot in the house. So this is like, no kidding, like mid 80s, guys. Wow. She, she was total still yeah, on we're, the We're on drugs is hot and heavy. Yeah, she grew it all in the house. And they would go into this busted VW bug in the front yard. And that's how they smoked. And they always roll the window down to kind of the cheat and chong moment. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, you want to come in, man? Every time. No, I'm good, dude. Just hang out here. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll tell you right now. I, I found that, I mean, like as a as a guy that you know was very straight laced about this kind of stuff, I had my mind changed immediately when I tried it. I'm immediately, and and I I definitely sympathize with the chaw and the dip story, man. Oh, I <laughs> I, I mean, I wanted to throw up within five minutes, and yeah. my buddy Matt and I won't say his last name because we were like I think we were 12 years old, and you were hanging out in the baseball diamond out in center field, uh, in in the in the actual football, um announcement where you know obviously they're not keeping score out there nobody's there so we went up there and put in a dip and i was just like this is bullshit man like i can't do this kind of stuff i, I tried beer <laughs> I'm probably so when, <laughs> i was like i think i was 15 when i tried you know drinking a hot milwaukee's best that we i don't know snagged from some yes. somebody's old man and i was like this fucking sucks too right but like i was like 21 years old or something when i first tried cannabis i was like no right. what is this 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 is different and right. i like i laughed my ass off with a bunch of great people that i'm still friends with to this day we had some you know doritos or something probably killed an entire bag by myself that night and the music felt great like you could feel it and then i went to bed i got the best night's sleep i had 
ever had. And so like, you know, like I, I only did it a handful of times before the Marine Corps. And then, and, you know, I got out and I think it was like 2015. I went out to Colorado where shit's, you know, like, Hey man, I'm your bud tender. What do you want? And I'm like, I don't know, man. Tell me. <laughs> so <laughs> like he gave me some, you know, stuff that wasn't, you know, what we used to call Mexican ditch weed, right? With the sticks and the seeds and popping and all that kind of stuff in it. <laughs> and it was really nice stuff. And you know, I think they yeah. called it Asian blonde or something. And I sat around with another guy that I loved to death, you know, like we're best, you know, I didn't know him a couple of years before that. And now it's like, he's my brother and we laughed and we had a great conversation. And I'll tell you right now, man, like over the years, it gave me back my empathy. It, you know, it it was one of those things where I was so calloused from thinking, you know, about life in terms of, you know, kind of military mission mindset, Mm -hmm. right? Like mission was everything to us. And if you didn't accomplish your mission, you were, I mean, you were shit birds and you were disgraced to your unit. Like you really were not just your unit, like the, the Marine Corps. Why? Because Marines, the Marines got great cop propaganda because they yeah. really inject the entire history in you. Yeah. And they're like, don't fail. Don't you fail all these dudes you, and all these ladies that were Marines. Yeah. You die failing. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what's it, pushed into you, you. You carry it with you for the rest of your life now. The propaganda is good. It, it's amazing. And the thing is, it's like, in the back of my head, I'm still that I'm going to accomplish kind of stuff. But I'm telling you right now, man, like it gave me back my empathy to the point where I was like, huh, maybe I need to chill the fuck out. Maybe I need to look at my kids as like little kids. Remember what it was like right. to be six and seven and dad would come home and, you know, he's, he's tired and he you know doesn't want to hear a whole lot of loud noises. He wants to see a clean house and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, like you got to just look at it act like you're the six year old or seven year old. And, and that's what I had to do. It's just like instead of going over there and giving them the business, you just go over there and give them a hug and a kiss. They, you know, that's like that's what it did for me. And and I'm telling you, like I I see it as, you know, great medicine, especially for people, you know, that have done you know, what we've done and, or, you know, whatever you're, you know, maybe you got some post-traumatic stress of some sort. It doesn't have to be from combat. Like it's just life, man. And right. I don't know. I, I see that. 2020, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. There's a lot of people. Oh, I'll tell you what, America can really issue. benefit from, <laughs> from all getting together and having right. a nice long toke in a conversation instead of it, it, instead of feeling like we all hate each other and, and all that kind of stuff. Right. We have so much. That's what gets me. When you actually get down to the meat of what people are upset about and what they want in their own life, we have so much in common. We have so yeah. much in common, but we're allowing ourselves to fight over again, those scraps. And we're fighting over a team instead of what we're trying to solve. And we're not focused on we're and that's a distraction. We're more focused on, we want this team to win. It has to be that team, but we're not focused on, Hey, let's solve this problem. And yeah. to me, that's where I like the last show. I was like, I want to start injecting where people, and that's a big reason I want to talk to you this week. Uh, and I want people to start finding out ways where they can get involved. I understand, you know, just holding on to that job right now is everything. And this last Thanksgiving, that was one of the things like, you know, I, I, things I was grateful. Hey, I, you know, I'm glad I wasn't one of those people that was affected uh, with the whole job thing. I'm, I'm very fortunate and I'm grateful for that. But you, you know, so there's people out there that, yeah, man, they're, they're, they're worried about that stuff, but you, the accountability for your elected officials, understand how to co- connect with them, contact them mm-hmm. and hold them accountable. Like write those, e- there's never been an easier time to communicate to someone than right now. You take 10 minutes, write two sentences. I'm one of those guys. I have no problem sitting down. I have already some letter templates, <laughs> no kidding, where I'm like, okay, I'm upset about this the day that this congressman's doing. Do, 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 change this, change that. Da, 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 da. Here's my comments. Boom, I send it out. And it does matter. And now you take one letter, it's not going to carry a lot of weight. But if you start seeing a bunch of people sending that in, because the problem is we're arguing about stuff at, when we're, it's too late. We're arguing about things after someone's already been elected. We're arguing about things after laws have already been passed. Where's all that argument way early when that bill didn't just hit the floor and then you miraculously on, you know, the next day was law. I mean, it had to go through a process and, you know, for most bills, you know, I'm not talking about the omnibuses that they rush through. (laughs) I'm, I'm talking about like the regular bill where there's no thing and then how things are amended and attached to it and, and whatnot. And then, engaging with that representative and doing that and then understanding 
where does it really fall in line with the Constitution? And I think one of the arguments I always have with people, and when I say argument, it's not like like we're we're fist to cup. It's like a debate. Is people understanding that, you know, you know, three separate powers of government equal but separate? They don't have to accept the others. And, and that's and what's were, great about it. They were, you know, they, they were thought and at least argued by the the Federalists that they would check and balance each other. The anti-federalists all through their bullshit. Right. <laughs> nobody, right. nobody gets taught the anti-federalists. Right. It's like, yeah, I mean, that would be great, you know. And that's the thing is like that's why I think I'm, you know, I this is going to be a different run, right? Is I'm 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 seeking the nomination for governor here in in you know 2022, and it's going to be a different kind of run because before I've been running for legislatures and right. You know, you, you're only part of a body. As the executive, you are the head. You're setting the pace. You're setting the tone of the, the enforcement, direction. right? And yep. that's where you can actually really shine as a as a as a leader. You know, and you know, if it, there is one thing that the Marine Corps does, and it does well, it does make people leaders, good or bad, right? Like they, yep. you make decisions Agreed. under pressure. And you are fine with owning the responsibility, you know, and I say this for most people, um, not all, but a lot. And so if you can be that person as an executive who is saying no executive branch, you report to me now. And this is what we're going to be doing. We are going to leave people alone. And if you don't, I'm going to send the full force of the executive after you. So right. Like that's a different type of understanding. Like that's nobody, nobody stands up to government. Nobody holds government accountable anymore. And, you know, people can get involved. You know, you don't have to run for governor or some, you know, U.S. house. Like you don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. And really, I don't, at this point, I don't think people believe that if they did and they, they there was a vote, they, they would, could, could trust it anyway. So what you can do right now is local. Repair Absolutely. relationships and try to find common ground so that people know you're not the monster that you're made out to be on TV by whatever other side there is. It's just, hey, man, I know these guys. And yeah, man, he may be a little more like this. But let me tell you something. Like, they're good people, you know, through and through. And that's, I'll tell you, man, this, this is the, one of the coolest stories that I had for the whole thing. Um, is when I when I was nominated for this the Senate run, what we do as libertarians um, at our convention is you, you go up and you stand in front of the auditorium and the people who are actually members of the LP that show up and they vote, man. So not only are you running, you know, you, you know, standing in front of a crowd of your peers who are, I'll tell you right now, some of the smartest people I've ever met. They, they're voting to say, not you, not you. And oh, by the way, on this uh, platform. There's also a non-existent being called Noda. None of the above. You don't get that out of Democrats and Republicans. So libertarians, honestly, if they have a bad enough candidate, they can go, nah, fuck that guy. We're voting Noda, right? And so right. I was up there with this guy, uh, Chase Oliver, and Chase is a a guy from Atlanta. And I didn't know anything about him other than, I was like, dude, you look real familiar, man. Where are you from? And it turns out we went to the same high school. Only Chase grew up as a progressive and was, well, I should say he chose the progressive route because his parents were, you know, really, really conservative. But he's also a gay man here in Atlanta, right? And right. I was like, you went to Brookwood? And he's like, yeah. I was like, you know, what year did you graduate? And he graduated a couple years after I did and everything. And he goes, yeah, we probably wouldn't have sit at the same lunch table though. And I was like, why is that? And he goes, well, you know, I was I, I was a progressive, and I'm guessing because you were a jock that you weren't. And I was like, yeah, no, man, I was a neocon. I mean, I said, but look <laughs> at it. I, you know, like we, there there was a bunch of admin bullshit going on. We had a lot of time to just sit there and talk and be, you know, very anxious about what was going to happen anyway. But we found this common ground. And I was sitting there going, like, hey, man, this is a liberty moment, right? Like this is one of those things where I get to go. I'm sitting here with a former progressive as a former neocon, and we've agreed on some real core, key, consistent principles that are super basic, and we can live in harmony and peace and love with each other. And I'll tell right. you what, like that was a moment that I was just like, this is the future. If we can show people how to do this and what it takes, you know, go put away your pride. 
Don't put away your past. Forgive, love, stand in a moment. That kind of stuff, man, that is what I think really just gets people excited to be around other people is, hey, man, I accept you. I know we're different. I know we've got some past. I know we're, you know, like we're not perfect beings, but I accept you for who you are. Just don't hurt people and don't take their fucking stuff. Like that's right. <laughs> cool, man. You you're down. Oh man, I'm down too. Like it's like I don't know, man. I I, I wish more people could hear the message. That's I mean, I, uh, you just kill them with it. I uh, I share with my uh, kids. Uh, you know, um, my oldest son he has Down syndrome, so. Uh, it's a little bit different in the, with, with him uh, because he's always going to be in my life. So I'm always going to be that layer of protection. Um, the, the younger one I'm going to send off in the world. So it's going to be a little different now, obviously, that yeah. I impart lessons with him. And one thing I share with my son, Austin, is I apply the neighbor principle. The neighbor principle to Brian Plummer is this. Most of my neighbors, I can't honestly say I like each and every one of them, but if <laughs> any one of them needed me, I would be there. Damn right. I do not have to like them. I do not have to agree with them, but if they are my neighbor and they need assistance, you need food, you need shelter, your kids need me watch, you you know, something's going Jump on with start, your house. Jump change your whatever tire, whatever. Need, I am, you know what, and I'm so grateful, and, and my wife's just naturally like that, and I think you know, watching her has been more of a motivator in many aspects. She is that person, that mom on the block that a lot of, you know, other wives go to and, you know, for assistance or whatever. And I'm like, man, that is just a good thing. So if we as an individual can just apply the neighbor principle, all that will take care of itself. I really believe that a lot of that stuff, when we just look at people, like I'm not here to judge anyone. You be who you feel. If you're, you're a peacock, be a peacock. I may look at you and not think you're a peacock. But, hey, that's fine. <laughs> right. You just be who you want to be, and I'm cool with that. And again, you don't hurt anybody. You don't try and take the stuff. You don't try and apply force on someone uh, so you can, you know, so everyone's made to believe you're a peacock. Then that's a little bit different. But I mean, I, it's so easy to solutions because we teach our kids these lessons. If we just yeah. apply the lessons that we teach our kids, a lot of the stuff will solve itself. And, and I, I, I agree with you, man. I mean, more people have got to start getting involved at, in their community and it, it should start at the lower level. I mean, and just get involved. And that's, you know, I, I did that and it's going to start there. I've already had people hit me up, said, man, why don't you run for council? So I'm not there yet, man. I mean, you got to, <laughs> right. and I think what it is, you have to look at when you take that on, cause you're like me, if I take it on, I'm going to be fully responsible for it. Yeah. Right. You have to make sure your life is set up to be responsible. Well, and you better check with your your significant yeah. other, right? Because absolutely, that, I'll tell you what, man. When when they talked about having great women behind amazing men, and all, or you know, I should say, amazing women behind great men, that's you can't be a great man if your significant other, you know, isn't on board with this thing. And I agree. Man. You, no way. I agree. Absolutely agree. And because it is, it's it, they're they're going through it with you. And, and, you know, it, it's not a pretty, uh, site. Um, people are more, yeah, it's not people. Are you gotta get more, them once they, once they see that it really doesn't affect you all that much, you know, and you can laugh at right. the bullshit, then they're okay with it. But you know, a lot of people can't laugh at that. They get mad. Oh man, people calling me names. People don't like me. Like, you know, you better be that. Per yeah. Like I'm telling you, Marines are made for this kind of stuff. And I wish more Absolutely. Marines would get, because they don't give, they have zero fucks. Like it always, what it always starts with this. Is that guy a Marine? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't a Marine, I don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> oh man. Marine texture. You might think about it like, well, let me think about it for a second. <laughs> that's so, it's so funny. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like, you're just like, no, oh, no, I really don't give a shit. And <laughs> like, okay, you're going to, you called me what man? Better people have called me far worse. Far right. fucking like I don't okay sure you, you don't like me I'm I, <laughs> better I, people that love you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and probably the people that love me the most right like because yeah. they took the damn time to tell me how jacked up I was right dude it's great well man we've been going for about an hour fifty minutes I know you got to get back into you know getting your house in order as far as you know getting your Go get moving in and stuff and I really do appreciate the time dude and oh. I think we should try and do this a little bit more I, I would love to do this like every couple of months with you man just catch Let's do up it. with you and, because I think you have so much good you are truly a scholar and oh. you know when we talk about liberty and freedom you can tell people exactly what that is how it aligns with our founding fathers there's so many things that we miss out on 
And we got to stop the chance. We have to dig into the knowledge. There's never been a time where we haven't had more access to knowledge. Yeah. You know, it just blows my mind how we can be so stupid. And, and I always, <laughs> mili- like my, cause I still work with the military and I, I yeah. tell people that we now have the lowest level of troops having access to the most senior leaders briefs. So wow. they are informed yeah. and we still jack it up. Crazy, isn't it? That makes no sense. No, but I really do appreciate you. Well, hey, Brian, let me let me tell you, man. Like, I love you, man. You know, anytime you want to talk, you be like, hey, you just gotta throw it at me and go, hey, this week on this day, let's make it happen. And I'm be like, yeah, of course, you're Brian Plummer. Fuck yeah, let's <laughs> let's <laughs> let's do this shit. I'm and uh, no, <laughs> man, I, I I'm serious, man. Like this this has been this has been such a blessing to be able to you know reach back and and talk with you know you and a bunch of other guys and you know really kind of you know see how people have come along and and what they're doing. It's just it, it's fantastic. Oh, I'm so proud of you, man. When I looked and saw how many votes that you garnered, I was. <laughs> Like, you know what? But that means something, man. And you know what? These next couple of years, the Libertarian Party, this is opportunity. Just like when I looked at the Capitol, what I was telling people is like, well, this is a opportunity here. And you need to seize that. This is is people saying, hey, I now have an emptiness. I'm ready to put something in there. Yeah. And they're uncomfortable, finally. Yep. There's an opportunity here. And I, I'm more than happy to help. If you all are in the Georgia area, I encourage you. Uh, what ShaneHazel.com, right? You still got that side up? Yeah, man. We're going to be working on that um, with everything going on. And I've even had somebody contact me the other day. Uh, this like, hey, man, your website sucks. <laughs> I was like, yes, because I do it <laughs> on top of everything else <laughs> I'm doing. So, and he's like, yeah, man, my wife, uh, sh- she'll help you out with it. And I was like, oh, we're right, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah, used man. to do this kind of stuff. I was like, cool. So yeah, well, let's. Uh, uh, you can you can find out uh, you know some things there, but uh, Radical is the show. Um, you can listen to Radical on every major uh, podcatcher out there. So uh, it's radicalpod.com. There's links to it and Twitter and Facebook and all that fun stuff. So and I'll make sure to have that stuff in the show notes, and I will make sure to put that stuff uh, that people can go to and, and learn more about constitutional scoring, where they can get information about the representatives. Uh, that's just great information, Shane. I appreciate your time. Yeah, brother. Uh, thank your family for allowing me to sit down <laughs> with you for this long. Um, but I don't want to get you in trouble. So, hey, thanks, brother. I love you too, man. All right, I'm brother. Well, hey, yeah, I, I appreciate everything, and we'll talk real soon. Word. Peace. <laughs> um, don't hurt people, and don't take their stuff.